This is the Rubik's Cube. See, what you got to do, well, I'm missing the red right there, but you just got to imagine whatever color is missing on your cube, you got to remember where the colors are and get on color line. I learned this from Mr. Larry, my gym teacher at SEC that we moved to Clark. He, um, he, he looked at mastering it, out of solution, and the simple solution by Rubik, simple solution to the to Rubik's Cube by James Dean North. So, out of all of them, a simple solution is what he memorized, and he showed me how to do it. And, and he had the book, he, he handed me the book back to me. Here's here the copy so he could have the copy. That's cool. And then, um, and he figured out that pyramid, uh, not, uh, the um, thing we've moved the pegs around, leave one left. He knew there was a pattern, he showed me. And he mentioned other patterns. But anyway, um, He's pretty clever. He reminded me of Mitch Leary and Bob Spokeboy. Anyway, the thing is, you, um, think, um, you, and then, and James A. North says, once you learn the pattern, you learn the thing to solve, solve, learn ideas that are on your own to cut yourself in time, which gives help me figure out a pattern do the middle differently. Okay. I use this corner to get it done to do the pocket cube. Anyway, back to what I was doing. The um at the Salvation Army camp, there was a lot of camp counselors that wanted to learn to solve it, including mine, the counselor and a week's time, I can't remember if we were there after a week or two weeks, whatever the case. He learned, he was just dedicated, he would stay there, he would stay there all the time. Even when we were waiting in line to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, he was there, eager to learn. Then all the other camp counselors wanted to learn. And then he said, don't be surprised though, next time you come back, we'll have a, a school teaching Rubik's Cube. Because at this, uh, the Camp Happy Land, where it's army camp, they also had they had Rubik's Cubes there. They had pyramids, all of them there. But anyway, and a magician named Benny taught me the vanishing quarter trick, you know, and he was able to learn Rubik's Cube. He wanted to be called a whiz kid, too. All right. I taught him some tricks, and he taught me some tricks. Okay. Let's see. The, um, like if you wanted to get one up there, you, you just put, you come, you see where the color's got to go by bringing this down, and you know that it meets up, just like that. Now the reason, don't worry about it solved, because I didn't really mix it up yet. Alright, I'm just giving ideas. Same way here, but you got to move both these up, and you see wherever it's at, on what side to look up, to turn towards you, to come back to match up with color line. You do that all up. Now if it's in here, you do a different step. You, you have to um, turn this a certain way. You gotta see it mating up once, twice, and then keep this on this side once, twice, like that. Um, see, suppose it's see that that white matches up with the center blue. So if it didn't match up, then you would turn it this direction and do the maneuver. So it's the same thing, but since it matches up with the center. And that's on the bottom that you see you have to go there. And you turn it once, twice, and hold the cube, turn this way, keep it like this, and then you see it's right here. And you turn it once, and you can bring this up once, once, to the center, to the color it wants to go to. And you go once, twice, like that. 
think about it, if you keep doing that, being if you don't want to know certain patterns, if you keep doing that idea with all the corners and all the middles, eventually all the sides will get done. I mean, you can solve it by doing all the patterns, but I realized that if you know how to get the top and get a color line, and then get those up there, then once you learn how to get the corners by a pattern, then all you gotta do is just keep doing what I said with all the things all around, and the thing will get done. But here's some patterns. There was a kid on a church bus at Good News, and the church actually marked it as inspiration in the 1980s, and he's still doing it. That's cool, year 2011. Anyway, we got a big charter bus now. That's cool. Anyway, um, that's somebody that went to Mark Taylor's house. That's cool. Um, this is checkerboard. You just go twice all around. Once, twice. You could do that. Anyway, I knew a kid could do all my patterns, but he didn't have to follow the rules to. But I bet with practice he could if I had time with him. Anyway, and if you do this idea, this is cat's eye, called six boxes or, uh, see, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, well, it was six boxes, but it got into the two solved and two done, okay, so you just do it once, twice, 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 to bring it back, there, well, I do it like once, twice, once, twice, once, twice, bring it back. Okay, so I go once, once, once. Now we got cast on, well, we got checkerboard, not checkerboard, we got six boxes, and then you do the same, you know where the centers are, you get it right. thing is, I learned to take the idea and make my own thing. If it's six boxes, I'll do like I do checkerboard. Twice, twice, twice. Now I got my own fancy design. I was doing this in the 1980s. Before I learned how to solve it, I was I got where I could solve a top done and a side done. But now that I know how to solve it, I don't have to do it anymore. Um, even when I had a pocket cube, well, not the pocket cube like that for the family, it's a Rubik's cube, but it's on a chain and you put it in your pocket, or it's not on a chain, it's just a pocket, pocket Rubik's cube, different from a pocket cube. A pocket cube is like doing all the four corners right there. It's like taking a piece of that as a pocket cube. And I just took a guess, you could do the same with the corners. It'll get done, and that's what it was. Now, when I do the other thing, I put it back to where the corners meet. Ouch! Oh, good, the two side ones. I could do my own version of this too. I just make my own thing here. Four crosses. Four crosses. Well, that'd be red there. Four crosses and two checkerboards. Well, yeah, two. two I mean, wait a minute. Where's the two checkerboards? There it is. Two checkerboards. Two checkerboards. Four crosses. Two checkerboards. It's interesting that you just look. There's some something in our spine or something or somewhere. The, remember that, that he, invented, he created us? With our body is somewhere, it's got a shape of a cross. Ain't that neat? And everything is made of crosses and designs that are in outer space are similar, are actually the same similar, similar ideas of your body built. It all maps up. If Jesus says, I'm the creator. Jesus says, I'm the creator. And if you see me, you've seen the Father. I'm my Father of one. Bible says
says in the very strange weather patterns, there'll be wars and rumors of wars, one world government, and it also mentions that you cannot hide in the end time, so it's important to get saved. And you know why? Have you noticed that video cameras are everywhere, even at traffic stops? Even they snuck in the 360 kind, and before they had the cam, I mean, I mean, before they had the antennas on the poles with the surveillance cameras everywhere, they just didn't have the antennas with it. They just had the video cameras. But now I'm seeing little antennas popping up everywhere. Could this be connected to HARP? Capital H A A R P HARP. And Russia's got their woodpecker because it sounds like a woodpecker. Maybe Jesus knew strange weather patterns because he knew that mankind was going to destroy herself. And then at a certain time he's going to come in and, and say enough is enough, as Tommy Story says. 